Hello Targar friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for another Orc Mode workout. Today was max effort deadlift day. We don't, we don't need the whole spill guys. Just please click the like down below. Let's skip all that. A uh, lot of questions from the missed lockout. People are like, was it your grip? What, what happened? Um, no, you guys sometimes don't understand. It's, it's a case of absolute fatigue. And it was my back that wasn't strong enough to lock it. And what I mean by that is when you guys watched my 605 PR the other day, which was very, very strong, you saw me slow through my sticking point, grind for a second right above the knee, a hair above the knee, and then I exploded through and locked it hard and held it for three seconds. Okay. That's way more grip strength than it takes to pull 615 even from a short deficit. However, notice that I explode to the lockout. On this one, I grind, and when I grind and I falter, I tend to lose my grip sometimes when I shimmy on a grinder at the top, because I'm already, you've fatigued a bit, grip is fatigued, and when I kind of shudder like that, it'll go ahead and just slip out of my hand because of the, the, the bounce on the hand, on my weaker hand. Uh, yes, I'm doing the grip work though, we're going to keep doing the grip specialization all the way until I can hold 700. So that's not an excuse for me to not do grip work, I do grip work three out of four days every week. But I just flat out was not strong enough to lock it. It wasn't just grip. It was my overall strength. It's not as simple as more grip. Because even if I had been able to hold it, the bar stopped moving. And I was already shimmying. Like I'd already failed the lift. Okay, I failed the lift already. Uh, and it's just my back just couldn't handle it. Um, but I'm also past the 40-day mark. I'm at 40 days of this training of maxing and then doing tons of accessory work. 40 days straight. Okay, I'm about to deload. So I'm pretty much at the limits of my, my recovery. I'm pretty much overreaching at this point. And I just didn't have enough strength left to do that. And you guys can see it here. Notice me kicking my leg out with these glute bridges. I have no trouble lifting this weight. It's 505. My hamstring is cramping. And my hamstring cramped all the way through this set. So I'm just like, let me call it at two sets. Uh, you know, a week from now, I'll come in and I'll knock this weight out for an easy, easy 3 by 10 And remember, my goal is to get to the work sets on this with 550. Um, but my hamstrings are shot. So much so that when I went after this set, I went and checked in the mirror and specked the back of my leg to make sure there's no bruising. Just to make sure I didn't pull a hamstring. Right? But fortunately, I've been doing tons of good mornings and hamstring work, so there was no hamstring pull or anything. It's just, that's a sign of extreme fatigue. Uh, deficits tend to work the hamstrings really hard. Okay, I hit big PRs earlier this week. 552 squat. 605 conventional deadlift. With like five weeks without a day off from training. So I'm fatigued. It is just an accumulation of fatigue. Uh, and I did not have the strength to do that. Now, we could argue, I could try to argue, well, if I was fresh, I would have got it. Well, coulda, woulda, shoulda. We don't, we don't think like that. I could say there's a real good chance. But we didn't. We own it. We accept it. We move forward. And I always remind you guys, you cannot get upset or be emotionally attached to missed lifts. They let us assess ourselves. They let us test ourselves. They let us look for the weak points. And in that case, I felt my back. My back just couldn't handle it. So I've got to do, again, a little more volume for the back. You know, people say, Jason, your back is massive. What are you talking about? It's massive enough to pull 605 real clean. Hey, that's great. But 605 isn't 650, and that's the goal for the year. Just like the grip. You know, we could argue my grip was able to hold that the other day. I've been able to hold 650 at the lockout with change, right? Well, that's not 650 top to bottom. And that's not 700 at the lockout, right? So we keep working, guys. We keep moving forward. Same thing on these. I felt all the fatigue. Uh, I ended up stopping at three sets of good mornings. And I went ahead and took the third set past 20, got to about 23 reps or so, and said, okay, that's enough. Hamstrings are just done. Again, that happens when we're at the overreaching mark, though. Hamstrings, low back, those are things we feel. Those are things we notice. You know, but we go ahead and finish this workout. We get in and train hard. We get in and train, get it done. All right? I'm about to get a little bit of time off, so who cares, right? Get in, stimulate the last bit of growth, 
earn that deload. Get a good night's sleep tonight, plenty of protein. But never, ever, ever stress your missed lifts. I don't. I always think that's funny. I mean, I, I feel like sometimes the people who follow my journey, they get more upset about a missed lift than I do. And you know what? I'm going to be honest. I love you guys for that. Like straight up, for those of you who are five minutes into this video who are upset that I missed that lift, I love you guys and gals. You guys are freaking awesome. And I appreciate that level of support. I appreciate that level of support. And I'm, you know, humbled that people feel that way. Like that they're caught up enough in my successes at this point that they get emotionally attached to me missing a lift. Like that's humbling. Um, and it makes me want to be a better person. Makes me want to do better because if people follow my journey that close and I've done some stuff in the past I'm not always proud of. But it means that I need to be setting a better example for people. Because what if it's an 18 or a 19, 20 year old guy watching that and he's then looking up to something I'm doing. I got to set a better example, guys. That's stuff I think about these days. That's one, one of the reasons I do stuff different. I, I think about that stuff. Let me set a better example for other people. Rows. Um, I use the same weight I've been doing 10 by 10 with. I'm like, you know what? Let me just do 15s and see if I can get five 15s. Let's get better work density and then I can start slowly working this weight up. And I've been doing the volume to get the back and the grip, but I'm getting good with the axle bar. And I feel like the longer sets where I regrip give me the best grip training anyways. So let's get the work density. I think five really high rep all out sets. Every squat and deadlift workout is going to be enough. Keep in mind, those are every 48 hours. Uh, so again, quality sets, I think, I think it'll work. Uh, and I felt that the higher work density, I noticed you start to get that lat cramp. And the forearm grip, like having to regrip it midway through these sets. Some of them I had to regrip it three times to finish. It's good grip training. Better work density there. Let's see if we get the heaviest weight I can get to and still do this. I'm going to try to micro load it up. All right? I'm going to try to get to 15s every time. And when they get a hair easier, I'll just add weight. It gets a high, little higher quality sets, higher work density instead of the straight 10 by 10. Something like 515. So what I'm doing with the overhead press and things. I think it'll give me the desired result. I'm not worried about loss of grip from less reps because it's higher work density. 75 reps done with the same weight over five sets is harder than the same weight done for 100 reps spread over 10. It's more work density. We're getting good grip work. Of course, I'm still doing my pinch blocks, my grippers, my, my forearm work. Doing everything. But if I get better work density on these and can get stronger at it, that'll help too. So we're going to manipulate the volume of hair here. Manipulate the work density keep moving forward all right but definitely by the end of this my lats and my forearms were lit up just as much as my hamstrings my hamstrings are shot like I was cramping on those glute bridges I'm like I was just like shocked I'm like man I can't even do these I mean I could physically do them but it was getting painful and I was worried about pulling a hamstring so I got a bench tomorrow I do not want to get a hamstring cramp when I, if I miss a max bench because that happens. So, <laughs> we got to think about this stuff. Ooh. But, again, this felt good. I think this is a nice sweet spot too, doing the 15s on this. I know it's so different. People see me do 10s, 15s, 20s. But it's working. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting more jacked. It is working, but I'm using all the rep ranges now. We do maxes all the time we do tens tons of tens 12s 15s some 20s some 50s I'm using all the rep ranges they're all tools guys i'm trying to make the best use of all of them i want to use every tool that i have at my disposal that's why we use the specialty bars that's why we use chains that's why we rotate lifts that's why i'm doing the different rep ranges and weaving it all together okay i want to use the best tools for the job so that i can get the best results possible Try to use the appropriate tools and use them appropriately. But that was tough. That was tough. Then I did my curls. And a reminder, I'm not going to have time to give you guys a whole spiel. This is mainly for tendons. Obviously, really high rep band curls will stimulate bicep growth. Right? But the bigger picture here is not tearing a bicep. This hypertrophies connective tissue. 
build those bicep tendons as we continue to build grip strength so that I keep my biceps safe on those deadlifts, right? Ultra high priority. And yes, I take this to failure too. It takes some rest pausing to get there because you accumulate so much fatigue with the overspeed work because of the band pulling it back down. And left my biceps pretty lit. I'll probably do another set of these later today. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.